Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noon and today we're making a Nana character tea list. Nana is a manga created by Ai Yazawa and was serialized from 2000 to 2009 and received an anime adaptation in 2006 along with two live action movies. If you're a fan of manga and anime or a fan of fashion, you most definitely have heard of Nana. You might have seen the anime adaptation or even read the original manga, which unfortunately is still unfinished to this day. Nana is Ai Yazawa's most popular creation and a cultural phenomenon due to its spectacular storytelling and realistic characters as well as its iconic fashion and art style. So I personally knew about this series back when I was in high school, but I'd never fully gotten into the story until a few weeks ago. And guys, I'm dead serious when I tell you, Nana totally destroyed me. One of the reasons why I avoided Nana for so long was because I knew it would break me like this. And making this tier list is kind of my way to try and put the pieces of myself back together. And also because I can't afford therapy. I was also inspired by the tier list video made by Ashling Black and the style analysis made by Lisa Fibral. I'm so sorry if I just pronounced your names wrong. Anyway, the links to those videos I will leave in the description. Here are some disclaimers before we begin. So I've seen the anime and then I read the rest of the manga, so my opinions will be based on the whole existing series, including what happens in the pages that aren't adapted into the anime, and how these characters are portrayed there as well. Needless to say, this whole video is a huge spoiler for those who haven't seen or read Nana, so please watch at your own discretion. Also, do keep in mind that these are just my opinions, which might be different from yours, and feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below. And remember to be kind. Now, let's quickly go through the tiers. So on top, we have the besties tier, which is for my most favorite characters. I want to befriend them. I want to hang out with them, get boba tea. I want to tell them my deepest and darkest secrets. Next, we have You Served, which is for the characters that I don't necessarily love, but I do like them a lot, I appreciate them, they came, they served, and they have a special place in my heart. Then we have I See You, which is for the ones that I find thoroughly enjoyable and I would like to see more of them. Meh is for those I don't find particularly interesting, like I just don't really care for them. Ew is for the ones that irk me, like I'm instantly annoyed every time they show up. They get the bombastic side eye. And jail is, of course, preserved for the scum of the earth. One more thing before we begin, I'm using tearmaker.com to make this tier list, and even though there are already lots of Nana templates on there, I decided to make my own just because the available tier lists don't include some of the characters that I want to talk about. Okay, I'm so sorry for the long intro. Let's start ranking. First, we have Nana Osaki. Nana Osaki is one half of the Nana duo. Oh, by the way, I'm going to refer to the other Nana as Hachi from now on for the sake of distinction. As far as appearances go, Nana O is very iconic. I love her wardrobe, even though it's not really my style, because I will never be able to pull that off. I love the hair, the choker, the Vivian Westwood heart blazer, the piece of fabric that she ties to her microphone stand whenever she's on stage. I mean, what can I say? She is an icon and she is the moment. Nana is very confident and straightforward, which can come across as unfriendly sometimes, like back when she was in school, but she's actually a very loyal friend. Nana is also charismatic. She's definitely the type that effortlessly steals everyone's attention when she walks into a room. However, she does show possessiveness when it comes to relationships like with Hachi and Ren. Also, the whole joke about Hachi being a pet dog. I'll talk more about that when we talk about Hachi, but just know that I don't really like it. Nana seems to really think of Hachi as a pet that she owns sometimes, which I agree with Nobu is really weird. 
Nana's very adamant on setting Nobu up with Hachi, and she even becomes a little bit pushy about that. I mean, I understand that in doing this, Nana also wants Nobu and Hachi to be happy together, and I'm sure that she probably thinks that Nobu is eventually better for Hachi, at least emotionally. But in her own words, the real reason is so that she can keep Hachi like close to her, basically wanting to own Hachi in some ways, which isn't very healthy in my opinion. That said, I understand I sympathize with her as this isn't in entirely her fault or that she's intentionally being malicious, but it's more so due to her past, her upbringing, and her abandonment issues. Her relationship with Ren is definitely too romanticized by some of the fans sometimes. Like, back when I hadn't read or seen Nana and I just heard about it from my friends, they always made it sound like Ren and Nana's love story is so dreamy and kind of like hashtag relationship goals. But now that I've read the actual story, it's clear that their relationship is pretty toxic for the both of them, especially after they got back together. I really feel for Nana because she's one of the more tragic characters out of the whole cast considering her family stuff and especially later on when she loses Ren. I mean, on her birthday no less. Like, doesn't even have to be that cruel. I just feel like that went too far. It's like some Game of Thrones level cruelty to me. Overall, I think Nana is a very well-written character, which is something I can also say for the rest of the cast, yes, but especially for Nana O, oh, I think she can hold up really well as a main character. Like when I think about Nana the series, Nana Osaki is the first person to pop up in my head. That being said, I can't really put her in the besties category, mainly because of the way that she treats Shin. So Nana doesn't seem to give a damn about Shin, um, especially when he's caught by the police in that marijuana incident. I'm not saying that she hates him or anything, but I just feel like maybe she could have spared him some sympathy. I do agree with Ren that it's selfish of her to ask Ren to send in for Shin as a bass player for Blast so that Blast can go on tour. I mean, although Shin was being very reckless, yes, and I get that it's awful for the rest of the band considering how far they've come and everything, but I just feel like it's it's pretty cold of her to do that. Um, she could have at least spared him some sympathy, which she did not, so yeah, as much as I appreciate Nana O oh, and she's very, very iconic, but I'm gonna have to put her in the Yusof tier. Next, this one is gonna be controversial. I already know. <laughs> so we have one of my favorite characters. In terms of character design, guys, hold on to your tomatoes. Let me explain. So we're talking about Reira, right? Reira is the vocalist of Trap Nest, the rival band to Blast. I love, love, love her long curly hair. I love that it's this pastel powdery pink color in the anime. I think that color suits Reira as a character really well considering she is a bit of an unstable person emotionally. Please don't ask me why I associate those two things. Though her fashion style isn't as memorable as say the two Nanas or even when compared to a side character like Junko, I still like it a lot. It's very feminine and elegant and I would personally wear a lot of the pieces that she wears. Now, Rera truly is one of the more controversial characters in the series due to her relationship with Shin and Takumi, where she is one way or another in the wrong. First of all, let me be clear and say it is unacceptable for Rera to engage in a romantic or sexual relationship with Shin, who is a minor at the point of their coupling. I really don't give an F about her paying for sex, like I'm not shaming her for doing it or shaming sex workers, but what I cannot condone is one party here is underaged. Though I do believe that her feelings for Shin are genuine, but she can also be quite fickle and selfish about it because at one point, she wants to break up with Shin, right? But then she still demands to see him from time to time, like... I don't get it. You know, what do you want, girl? At the same time, I do feel bad for Rera as I think she is an extremely lonely person. It's mentioned that she doesn't have any other friends outside of her bandmates, and honestly, Trapnest as a band, they're not 
close like the blast members. This girl has been in love with Takumi all her life to no avail. She thinks her sole value in life is her singing abilities and her only reason for existing is to be Trapnet's songbird. I mean, she's pretty much Rapunzel at this point. She's so trapped in her own life. She even got the hair to prove it too. Clearly, her loneliness drives her to do immorally reckless things, like getting into a relationship with Shin and later on cheating with Takumi while the man is married with a child on the way. I mean, Takumi's also to blame in this case, but that doesn't cancel out Reira's own wrongdoing. By the way, I don't think Reira has officially met Hachi yet. Like, I kind of want to see that happen because I believe like Sachiko before, Reira will feel the crushing weight of guilt once she comes face to face with the woman she's hurting. So yeah, I'm having a really hard time ranking her. This is just a me problem, but there's something about Reira that makes me think I can fix her. <laughs> I'm still not okay, you guys. Well, anyway, I think she can go in the ICU tier. Like, I, I cannot place her any higher than that. And she's definitely not a meh character to me because I personally find her to be interesting. Like, I kind of want to know more about her. Anyway, I'm gonna have to stop defending this woman. Okay, I'm gonna put her into the ICU tier and that's that. Alright, who do we have next? Okay, Misato Uehara, the fake one. Her real name is Mai, so that's what I'll be calling her from now on. Mai took on the name Misato Uihara because that's Nana O's half-sister's name, and Mai is a huge fan of Blast and Nana, so she did this out of her desire to be closer to Nana. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but it's still a little weird. So Mai's whole thing is that she is the biggest fan of Blast ever since they were just a small band back in their hometown. She was always doing the most to get the band members' attention, like buying them expensive gifts and learning every bit of information possible about them. Yeah, she was kind of pushy and it's clear that the other fans find her annoying. Mai doesn't seem to have any other friends though. She was raised by her grandfather who passed away and doesn't seem to be close with her family either. To be honest, I don't even know if her parents are still in her life because the girl quitted school at the age of 17 or something. So at first, I thought her whole fangirl thing was kinda cute. I mean, we love to see support for Blast, but now it feels kinda creepy. I understand that Mai too is a very lonely girl and Blast is her whole world, but she basically stalked the members to learn everything about them. Like, did she or did she not stalk them? I think her devotion for Blast, though admirable to an extent but at the same time, makes me a little uncomfortable. But it should also be noted that Mai does care for the members of Blast and they treat her like a friend too. So I'd say there's more of a genuine friendship between them and it's not just a regular fan and an idol situation. Other than that, Mai is a nice girl. She's smart, she's sweet, she's pretty likable. We see Mai later on quit school to become a manager for Blast. It's insinuated that she might be getting herself in some sketchy behind the scenes stuff at Gaia in order to protect Blast. I'm genuinely worried about her, seeing that she has to deal with that sketchy manager guy. Anyway, I would love to see how that story goes. In terms of character design, I do like her Lolita getup, or to be more precise, her curly blonde hair. Though I must say I love the black bob haircut that she later had a lot more. I think it suits her and her characteristics very well, and it's Pretty interesting that unlike a lot of the other Blast fans, Mai doesn't copy Nana O's style. Like she has her own style. I think that is a reflection of her character because though she wants to be close to Nana, but she's also aware of the nature of that relationship, of who she is, and of reality in general. Anyway, Mai, I'm gonna put her in ICU. 
I want to talk about these two characters at the same time because they almost always appear together, Junko and Kyosuke. So Junko is Hachi's best friend in high school and Kyosuke is Junko's boyfriend. Kyosuke and Junko are definitely stand-ins for the readers and the watchers of the series, providing sort of an outsider's perspective and explanation in a lot of the scenes. Within the story, Kyosuke and Junko are considered not just as regular friends, but more like parental figures to Hachi. So I don't know if this is a hot take, but I don't think Junko is a very good friend to Hachi. She's constantly talking down to Hachi, making some very snide comments. Granted, Hachi does make a lot of dumb decisions, but they're only in their early 20s and you're bound to make dumb decisions in your 20s. I know that Junko is trying to keep it real and she just wants the best for her friend, but she's so unnecessarily mean sometimes. How about when she visited Hachi after her breakup with Shoji? Was it really necessary to be real with Hachi when she's on the verge of mental breakdown? I mean, think about the reason why Junko was even there in the first place. It was because she was afraid that Hachi might self-harm out of desperation. I do agree with Junko that Hachi is not entirely blameless and she did somewhat contribute to the eventual downfall of her relationship with Shoji. But the fact of the matter is, Shoji was definitely in the wrong for cheating on Hachi. Even if Junko wanted to be fair and like keep it real, there's a time and a place and that wasn't a very suitable moment for you to be saying these things. I don't know, I get that she doesn't mean harm, but just because you don't mean to hurt others doesn't mean your words won't end up hurting them. I definitely think Kyosuke is a much kinder friend to Hachi and just a better friend in general. Kyosuke is mature and overall very chill. He serves as a voice of reason for other characters without being overly judgmental of them. So... As we're speaking about Junko and Kyosuke, I must say that I do like their fashion style and their aesthetics a lot, but there's one problem that I'm a little bit bothered by. You probably know what I'm talking about, their hairstyles. So look, I'm not a person of African descent, so I cannot be the judge of this. I don't know if this can be considered appropriation or not, Granted, it was a different time when the series came out, but that's not really the point here. Like I said, I'm a fan of their fashion and aesthetics, but the hair does come across as awkward to me. I mean, I feel like it was just unnecessary. They could have completely different hairstyles and nothing else would change. I guess you can probably say that, oh, they're artists and that's how they express themselves or they're just appreciating black culture. But I genuinely don't know. I'm just bringing it up because I personally think it's a little weird and unnecessary. So tell me in the comments, you'll be the judge. As for the ranking, I'm definitely going to be putting Junko in meh. And Kyosuke, I'm going to put him in I see you. Now we have Kurada. The photographer who was hired by Search Magazine to track down Nana and Ren. So he took that photo of them together, which was then used to expose their relationship. I mean, I understand that he was just doing his job, getting his coin, but paparazzis are just so annoying. Paparazzis as an occupation is just unethical and weird. It should not exist, in my opinion. I am just also very attached to the main cast, so I feel really protective of them. Like the minute I saw the first scene involving that tabloid, that search magazine, I was already rolling my eyes like, oh, here we go, here we go, I know where this is going. So this Kurada guy later on tricked Hachi into extracting information from Nana's estranged mother. He then used Shin to manipulate her, and then he insulted her. So, you can see how annoying he is. Like, I don't like him at all. Though, it seems like this Kurada guy has a conscience. Um, we know that he was also at the scene of Ren's accident, right? And then he called the police. No, actually, now that we're at it, can we talk about this? Doesn't Ren's accident 
remind you of Princess Diana's accident? You know, the whole public figure being chased down by paparazzis and then getting into a car accident? I don't know if it was intentional on Ayazawa's part because she's clearly very enamored with British culture and just Britain in general. Anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Back to Kurada. So he was chastised by his boss at Search Magazine for not taking pics of the scene of the accident. Which is just so disgusting. I mean, this editor-in-chief guy, okay, I'm gonna deal with his ass later. Just know that I don't like him. But then, if I'm not mistaken, in a different scene, Kurada said that he in fact did take photos of the scene of the accident, so what now? Like, this man is just so sketchy. He did admit himself that he might have developed some sympathy for the blast members and the people involved. I especially love the panel in the manga where he was staking out where Nana lived and saw Hachi through his lens who was giving him a look of disgust. Like, get the heck out of here, we don't need you, you're bothering us, leave us the hell alone. Another thing is that later on, after Nana's disappearance, Hachi received a bunch of photos of a woman who looked like Nana with the same tattoo and everything, singing in some bar somewhere, and it is implied that the person who took and sent those photos was Kurada. So, I'm... <laughs> I don't like him, but I'm not gonna say he's like a bad, a, a complete bad guy here, but I still don't like him. He's very annoying in my opinion, and he's definitely gonna go into the EU tier. Okay, so next up we have Ren. Ren used to be a bass player in Blast until he left his hometown to move to Tokyo and join Trap Nest. Ren is also Nana Osaki's boyfriend. So in terms of looks, Ren is also very iconic with his hair, his stage outfit, and his locket necklace. I think it's really cool that Ren's appearance is modeled after Sid Vicious. So I myself am not exactly a punk rock fan, so I don't often listen to the Sex Pistols music, but I do know about Sid, and I think Ren's look resembling Sid somewhat prophesizes his fate in the story. One thing I must mention is that I love seeing Ren in that white t-shirt with the harness. Remember he wears that when he comes to Nana and Hachi's apartment for the first time? I think that suits him really really well. Generally, it's just painful to talk about Ren because of what we know about his past and what happens to him in the end. So Ren grew up in an orphanage where he became friends with Yasu who later got adopted by a nice family. I think it's pretty interesting that Ren turned down Yasu's parents' offer to adopt him. I mean, I haven't thought much about it, but I do wonder why he didn't want to be adopted by Yasu's family at the time. So tell me what you guys think about that in the comments. I think Ren and Nana are very much alike in a lot of ways, and that makes their relationship pretty toxic. So both of them experience a traumatic childhood, and both have the tendency to be pretty possessive and obsessive in relationships. They can't seem to be happy together in Tokyo, but as soon as they're separated, they use unhealthy mechanisms to cope. Watching Ren and Nana makes me feel really frustrated sometimes, because I want them to be happy so much, but happiness seems always just a little out of their reach. So remember what Ren said before moving to Tokyo that he wanted to have Nana as a pet so that he could bring her along? And then later on, he mentioned how he wanted to unalive Nana sometimes. I mean, of course, we know that he wasn't going to hurt her, but isn't it quite disturbing still? Um, it definitely plays into that crazy in love trope where one wants to unalive their loved one so that the person belongs to them forever. Yeah, that's definitely unhealthy. And didn't they develop a choking kink later in the story? I mean, I'm not kink-shaming anyone here, but it's pretty wild. Also, remember, um, Ren refused to wear a condom, so Nana had to continuously be on the pill. Yeah, that's just not okay in my book. It's definitely a no from me. I especially adore Ren's friendship with Reira. I think they truly care for each other, and I just love reading watching their scenes together. 
I'm really surprised as to how much Ren cares for Reda since he always seems a little bit aloof. Um, so in my first draft, I noted that I wish that Ren could have been more of a mentor to Shin considering how much Shin looks up to him, but I've changed my mind now. Maybe it's for the better that Shin didn't spend that much time with Ren considering Ren was battling his own demons as well, so it might just turn out to be the blind leading the blind. Overall, I definitely want better for Ren. His demise is arguably one of the most significant turning points of the story, which undoubtedly triggered Nana's disappearance later. I mean, there is a time skip and a lot of the things that we couldn't see, so you might argue that there could be other reasons in between his passing and Nana's disappearance, but I believe losing Ren dealt the largest blow to Nana, which eventually caused her to leave. Also, I don't know why, but Ren always seems like a mysterious character to me, even though we do know a lot of information about him, but like what we know about Ren is usually told through the perspective of others. Like I feel like I haven't really known the real Ren yet, like you know what I mean? Anyway, for Ren, I think he deserves to be in the usurp tier. So up next, we have Shoji. Oh, I don't like this man. I don't like him at all. Shoji was introduced to Hachi by Junko and they were all friends before he and Hachi became an item. Shoji then went to Tokyo to go to art school and sometime later, Hachi also went to Tokyo to join him. So to me, Shoji is an unremarkable character. I mean, yes, his relationship with Hachi made a great impact on her and drives the story forward, but I honestly don't care for this man. I feel like the whole cheating thing has come to define his character because whenever I think about Shoji now, the cheating is the only thing that comes up. I certainly don't think he's the worst in the series, but he's definitely not a good boyfriend to Hachi, or even a good friend actually. Remember when he told Hachi that all oh, men could have sex without having feelings for the other person? Like, why? Why would you say that? What was the reason? It was just so icky to me. Of course, we all know those people exist and I'm not judging them or anything, but it's just such a weird thing to be saying to Hachi. I think Shoji and Hachi's friendship in the beginning was complicated because they were both attracted to each other, but they tried to stay just friends instead. From Shoji's actions later on in the show, I think he was only putting up with Hachi's antics in the hope that one day they could be more than friends. Shoji gives me a real I'm a nice guy vibe, like, you know what I mean? Then, in Tokyo, Shoji and Hachi got into a fight and he literally abandoned her in the middle of the streets in a city that she's never been to and he scuttled back to the hotel by himself like what the fuck? Like that was another shitty move. Also, is it just me or do you also think that it's weird that they proceeded to have sex on the same night after having made up? I mean, if someone were to pull that shit on me, they would never hear from me again. Now, let's talk about the downfall of Shoji as a character, aka Sachiko Gate. So, not long after Hachi came to Tokyo, Shoji started cheating on her with this girl, Sachiko. So, in my opinion, Shoji and Sachiko make a better couple, period. I mean, yes, they should be together, but... How about break up with your current girlfriend before you move on to the next one? Like, I I just can't with this man. The show though is very realistic since it's totally possible that you might fall in love with someone while being in a relationship with someone else. But isn't that an indication that your current relationship isn't working out and you should just end it and pursue what your heart clearly wants more? What Shoji did, aka cheating, is unforgivable. And he's such a coward about it too, like he was hiding away when Hachi showed up to visit him at work, like, oh, this rat, this guy is so icky, I don't like him. I so wish that we could have seen Nana punched him in the face, like I would pay good money to see that. 
I'm just glad that he seems to be a loyal boyfriend to Sachiko and takes good care of her later on when they're officially dating. I mean, I don't care for that couple, but good for them, I guess. I do enjoy the interaction between him and Hachi way later on in the story when they ran into each other at Jackson's. It's quite sentimental and honestly just bittersweet. Anyway, I've spent too much time talking about this rat. Shoji definitely is going into the EU tier. Now, let's talk about Shin. Oh Shin, my little baby. I always feel extremely sad talking about him because if you know, you know, his story is really tragic. But I guess he got a happy ending since he was still able to come out of it alive and is currently thriving, so we love that for him. Okay, Shin is the bass player of Blast. His look and design is absolutely iconic with the blue hair, the lip ring and chain, and of course, his Vivian Westwood orb lighter necklace. Shin belongs to the shitty home life category as he lost his mom very early on and his father genuinely didn't give a shit about him. The only adult figure in his life before meeting Blast and Hachi was Ryoko, who exploited and abused him, but we're gonna talk about that bitch later. Shin is also described to be mature for his age, which for me personally, that always sounds like an alarm. Like when a literal child is described as mature for their age, I think that nearly always means there's something wrong at home. The members of Blast were also aware of his unusual upbringing, seeing that he doesn't really go home and he just sleeps around at different places. However, apart from mentioning how weird it is sometimes, none of them ever really do anything about it. I guess apart from Yasu who did his job as a leader and spoke to Shin's dad and warned Shin about how his reckless behaviors might jeopardize the band. After joining Blast, Shin grew an attachment to Hachi, looking to her as a mother figure as for the first time in his life, he received genuine love and care from someone else. The scenes where he wished he had been born Hachi's child, I mean, you already know, we all cried. Like I definitely could not hold back my tears. I adore his relationship with Hachi so much. I think it's definitely one of the healthier relationships in the series. Shin's also very realistic about other people, which is shown in that conversation he had with Nobu after they found out about Takumi and Hachi. Shin was pretty spot on saying that lots of women, Hachi included, make questionable decisions because they're just lonely and that Nobu had the tendency to idealize women, which Nobu definitely did. I feel like he was the only one to show Hachi sympathy and respect once she finds out about her pregnancy and her decision to be with Takumi. Also, I think we need to give Shin more flowers for being the bridge between Hachi and the rest of the gang. After the pregnancy debacle, Shin was the one to contact Hachi, which led to the fireworks reunion. He was always there for Hachi as much as she was there for him. So I don't know what more to say about this. Like, I just love these two so much. Like, their relationship is genuinely so sweet. Now, Let's discuss Shin's relationship with Rera. So Rera paid him for sex. At this point, I believe she didn't know yet that he was underage. So their relationship started out like that, very transactional, but then they developed true feelings for each other. So like I said before, I believe their feelings for each other are real and I would totally ship them if it's not for the age gap and Shin being a literal child. I think the first time Rera knew about Shin's real age was when they hooked up in the car, remember that? I thought she was gonna be more shocked, but she seemed pretty nonchalant about it. And she was like more worried about herself getting old or something, like she was 23 or 24 at the time. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, you're an adult sleeping with a little child, like, I don't know, be more nonchalant about it. Anyway. Um, I'm very happy for Shin that he eventually decided to cut it off with Reira as well as remove the tumor that is Ryoko from his life. I feel like that marijuana incident was a real wake-up call for Shin, and I'm glad that he wasn't doing heavier drugs like Ren because he very much could have. 
All in all, you can probably tell already which tier Shin is gonna go to. Shin is such a precious kid to me. After all of the shit that he had gone through, I'm glad that he's doing alright as we see in the future um, where he becomes an actor and allegedly in a relationship with Mai who is more age appropriate. So yeah, I adore him, but I think it would be weird to put him in the besties tier because he's a kid, so I'm gonna put him in the Yusuf tier. So next up, we have Misuzu Uehara. Mm, this person is Nana Osaki's mother. Well, clearly she's not a good mom, and that is an understatement. So this woman left Nana for some man when Nana was four years old or something. She told Nana not to worry and that she was going to come back for her and then she didn't come back at all. She just disappeared. Like, Nana must be a skillet if she didn't end up developing PTSDs after that BS her mother pulled, which she clearly did. Misuzu also doesn't seem to give a shit about Nana to this day, like, it's not shown in the story that she feels any remorse or guilt. So after abandoning Nana, Misuzu went on to have a new family of her own and they seemed to live happily together. When Nana became famous and she started to appear a lot on TV, Misuzu seemed just unflinched. Just absolutely unflinched, like the woman had a lobotomy to forget about her own daughter or something. I don't know if it was just good acting or what, but that's just cold. Like, it angers me so much every time I have to look at her. After the truth about her relationship with Nana was exposed, she went back to her old ways and ran away from her current family. Again. I mean, is it that easy to abandon your family whom you clearly love? I don't know, I just don't like this woman. I don't like her at all. Later on, she did ask to meet Nana, but we don't get to see how that turns out, so I don't know. I wonder what she has to say to her daughter now after all these years, but I would just want to tell her to F off. I don't think anything she can do that will be able to make it up for Nana. So yeah, she's going into the EU tier. So now we have Misato Uehara, the real one the real one this time. So this girl is Nana Osaki's younger half-sister. She's also a huge fan of Blast. Misato's appearance greatly resembles Nana, which got her a lot of attention from people in the fanbase and also the band. Overall, Misato is just a regular schmegular girl, just going to school, having fun with friends, you know, just living life. There's not much to say about her because we don't get to see her all that much. Though it is kind of weird that at one point in the story, she says something like she is in love with her stepbrother. Alright, so Nana's mother, after abandoning Nana, married a new man who already had a son of his own. She and this man then had Misato, so this son is the stepbrother that Misato was talking about. So yeah, they are blood related, which is very weird if she is actually in love with him. Though she's just a kid, so maybe she means brotherly love, even though it doesn't seem that way at all when she said it. But anyway, um, yeah, so after the relationship between Nana and her mother was exposed, the paparazzi swarmed the Uehara foot shop in residence and Misato ran away. And I do feel kind of bad for this girl since she is such a huge fan of Blast and Nana just to find out that she is actually related to her idol but she can't really be happy about that knowing that her mother abandoned Nana. I mean, it is such a cruel twist of fate which is why this story is just so juicy, like there's so much drama. So yeah, I don't really feel much for this girl, she's very much a side character and I don't necessarily want to see her more in the story so yeah you already know she's going into the meh tier all right here comes the big one <clears throat> let's talk about nana komatsu aka hachi so right off the bat hachi is a deer i mean i love her i think she holds up very well as a main character just like nana o her style, though does change from time to time, is still very distinguishable. It's girly, it's chic, it's modest, 
you know, basically girl next door vibe. Everything about her looks already screams warm, approachable, friendly, cute, you know, all of that, which is very fitting for her personality. Speaking of personality, oh boy. <laughs> Her innocence and somewhat of an obsession with romance got our girl into so much trouble. Okay, no, but actually, I'm gonna confess. I actually tried to watch Nana once when I was in college, but I couldn't make it through the first episode because I thought Hachi was too obnoxious. <laughs> I know, I know, but just don't boo me just yet. I was only a child of 22 after all. That said, this time around, Hachi became one of my most favorite characters in the series since I've gone through the trials and tribulations of my early 20s and I also had time to reflect on so many past versions of myself, I now empathize with Hachi a lot more. I find her struggles and inner turmoil very relatable. Honestly, out of all of the characters in Nana, Hachi is the one that I can see myself in the most. Therefore, I have a really soft spot for her. Despite craving love and having so much love to give, Hachi is not very lucky in love, to say the least. I feel like just in general, men are her downfall. Like, it's just disgusted me so much when she was exploited by that scum of the earth Asano. And I was so mad, you guys, when that rat Shoji cheated on her. It broke my heart seeing the way her relationship with Nobu turned out. And I let out so many distressing nors. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> I'm so annoying. I'm sorry. Um. Anyway, I was so upset seeing Takumi continuing to wrong Hachi in so many ways. It's just too much for me, you guys. It's too much for Hachi. Like Our girl is constantly rolling in the trenches. Especially in the first half of the anime, which was mostly narrated by Hachi. We just see her going through all kinds of mishaps, like if it's not one thing, it's another. I mean, I feel for Hachi a lot. As for Hachi's decision to stay with Takumi, me personally, I think she made the right choice. And I won't be explaining it further because this video is already way too long. Maybe I'll make a separate video for that. That being said, I think Hachi and Nobu together would be able to build a healthy and long-lasting relationship. Their story is definitely the right person, wrong time sort of deal. Now, the most interesting and I would say defining relationship in Hachi's life is her friendship with Nana. Like, I just love how much Hachi treasures and respect Nana. I love their dynamic. Like, I feel like it's definitely more than just platonic friendship between the two of them. But alas, they're just flatmates. Like, the girls, they learn from each other, they care about one another, the bond between them is just so precious. I wish I had a friend like that. Though there is something that bothers me a little bit, which is how, you know, Hachi is jokingly considered a pet dog by the other guys. Like especially by Nana. I mean, I understand that it's just a silly joke and they're friends, they're, they're close friends. So, you know, close friends, sometimes they roast each other, they have nicknames and everything. But is it just me or is it kind of weird? Like, I just feel like it's a little bit disrespectful and I think Nobu was right to call that out sometimes. Like even Shin, despite not being possessive of Hachi, but he also referred to her as Blast Pet that one time. I don't know, it just makes me uncomfortable. It, you might think it's cute, but me personally, I'm a little weirded out. Anyway, I've talked too much again. It's just because there's so much to talk about Hachi and about Nana in general. And I don't have anybody to talk to about this stuff, so there you go. But anyway, let me wrap this up. Hachi, I love her. She's the biggest sweetheart, though she's imperfect, but I feel like... That makes her a more relatable character, which makes me like her more. So yeah, she's definitely going to the besties here. Oh yay, first person going to the besties here. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so next we have the snake oil salesman himself, Narita. Narita is the head of Cookie Music, the establishment behind Trap Nest. Narita is portrayed to be this flamboyant man who works closely with Takumi in terms of music production and marketing slash PR for Trap Nest. Narita is also, guess what, the plug for Ren. 
because he provided Ren with drugs, and it's implied that he introduced Ren to drugs, which eventually got Ren to become an addict. In return, Narita asked Ren to write top-selling records for the band. So yeah, he's a piece of shit for doing this. He's also a very handsy person, like in that one scene with Rera, and Rera seems to be disgusted by him as well. I mean, this man just gives me the ick, you know? The scene where Takumi sucker punched this son of a bitch <laughs> when he found out it was Narita who supplied Ren with drugs was so satisfying to me. Like, Takumi, you get to be the man that one time. After receiving the news about Ren's passing though, Narita completely broke down and he couldn't even bear to come see Ren in the morgue. So clearly guilt was taking over him, which is understandable and natural and that actually made him seem more human other than just being this corporate man, evil, mustache twirling villain with no conscience. But that doesn't exempt him from his shitty action, which definitely played a huge part in Ren's demise. So for that, we're going to be putting him in the EU tier. Up next, we have Naoki. You can already tell that I like Naoki. I think Naoki is cute. He's fun. He's a little goofball. He seems like a delightful person to be around. Also, I feel really bad for Naoki because he's always being bullied by Takumi. So Naoki is the drummer of Trap Nest and apparently the least popular. That's just a travesty. I feel like he's been portrayed as a dumb blonde. I mean, because of his hair, but you guys, we all know that the blonde hair is all natural. What are you talking about, Bleach? Naoki doesn't know her. I definitely think Naoki is an underutilized character in the series. I don't mean that he has to be messy or super complex, but I just want to see more of him. Naoki definitely exudes golden retriever energy. Or should I say, Kenoji? Oh, Naoki is so baby girl. He's so adorable. It's just kind of sad that people ignore him and like push him on the side like every time. By the way, isn't it kind of like the Hachi of Trap Nest? I mean, I'm talking about the vibes here. Naoki and Hachi's interactions are so cute also. Like they definitely match each other's energy. I would love to see more of their shenanigan. Naoki really cares about the members of Trap Nest. I feel quite bad for him because he also seems like he's quite lonely. Like he's really impressed with how close the members of Blast are and he was always looking for someone to hang out with. But like I said, like everybody, like nobody wants to hang out with Naoki. Like I just want to give him a big hug. Though we do get a Naoki POV chapter, I feel like that's more of a device for us as readers to learn more about the other characters like Takumi, Reira, and Yasu because they all went to school together. And in the end, my man Naoki turns out to be the side character in his own POV. <laughs> like, anyway, just this to Naoki. I want to see more of him. I want his baby girl goofy energy. And because he puts up with Takumi a lot, a lot. So we gotta give him points for that too. So yeah, we stand Naoki in this household. I'm definitely gonna put him in the besties tier. Okay, up next, we have Nobu. Oh, Nobu. <laughs> oh, my heart is already aching. Nobu is definitely someone that I want to be friends with in real life. I mean, I'd like to be friends with pretty much the whole cast, minus some, but Nobu really is my special boy. I think Nobu, though imperfect, is one of the better characters in the story. He's friendly, loyal, considerate, respectful, caring, and self-aware. Though sometimes Nobu can be a little childish and have unrealistic views of other people, he always has faith in the good of people in general, so I think that shows just how kind-hearted he is. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to open up an old wound and talk about his relationship with Hachi. Even though I understand why Hachi chose Takumi and I don't fault her for it, I'm still a Nobu and Hachi shipper. Like, I mean, in a perfect world, they would end up together. 
I think they complement each other and they can help each other grow as people. Like we can see how Nobu loved and respected Hachi when they were friends as well as within the stint of their romance. Respect being the key word here because I think it's a very foundational aspect when building a healthy relationship. The respect was clear as day in that scene when Nana and Nobu found out about Hachi's pregnancy and remember how Nana even became so frustrated with Nobu that he was so careful and he used protection every time he was with Hachi. Like she was hoping that if he had slipped once then the baby that Hachi was carrying might actually be Nobu's and not Takumi's. I mean the pain in her eyes guys, like I will never get over that. After that, Nobu refused to show himself so that Hachi could enjoy the fireworks with the other guys. And then when they met again at that party for Rera and Shin's birthday, Nobu was very courteous towards Hachi as well. The whole Nobu dating Asami arc, like I don't really care for. I do think that he started dating Asami in order to get over Hachi, which is no shade though, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. And Nobu was pretty respectful towards Asami during that relationship too. Anyway, my heart just aches every time I think about Nobu and Hachi. It does indicate that the two remain friends in the flash forwards to the future. Hachi and Takumi seem to be heading for a divorce while Asami doesn't seem to be in the picture anymore. So maybe there's a chance for Nobu and Hachi to come together again. I don't know. What do you think? Overall, I love Nobu as a character. Some might think he's boring outside of the romance with Hachi, but I personally still like him a lot. Maybe I'm just biased towards him because he resembles a friend of mine. <laughs> but anyway, Nobu's definitely gonna go to the besties tier. Next, we have Kinpei. So Kimpe is the manager of Blast. He makes his debut at the boot camp where Blast had to go to train while hiding out from the paparazzis. Like Kimpe is so LGBTQ coded. Like no, <laughs> he is gay. He's clearly gay. I mean, most of the characters in Nana are also LGBTQ coded, but anyway. Kimpe appears to only be interested in men and he treats the male members of Blast like so much better than Nana, which creates this chaotic dynamic between them. That said, he cares for Nana a lot. He's just being catty with her rather than actually hating on her. We can see in that scene where Nana experienced with her first hyperventilation and then when Ren got into that accident and Kinpei was really worried about how to break the news to Nana. And then after that he was like crying even though he had never met Ren. Like I believe Kinpei had never met Ren before. I think Kinpei definitely brings like this mothering energy to the group like Nana said it herself. Kinpei sort of replaced the chaotic energy that Blast been missing since Hachi left. It's really heartwarming when Nana thought about like them being a family with Kinpei being the mom, Yasu being the eldest responsible son, etc. It's just bittersweet to think about now because for a moment they had it and then the next disaster struck. There's not much to say about Kinpei though because we don't really know much about him. He's very much a side character. And if the story were to be continued, I would love to see more of him. I think he might get along with Hachi since both of them are like the mother of the group, but just with different vibes. So yeah, generally I like Kinpei. I think he's a fun guy, yet at the same time he's responsible and he's diplomatic. He takes good care of the band and he cares for the members as real people and not just assets of the company. So yeah, he's definitely going into the I see you tier. So up next, we have, oh, we have Asano. I hate this man. I absolutely hate him. I can tell you right now that he's going to jail. Yeah, it's jail time for him. Prison. So this man, who is a 29-year-old married man, slept with Hachi, who was a high schooler at the time. Like, tell me, does he or does he not deserve jail? He only shows up for a little bit at the beginning of the story, but his actions left a terrible impact on Hachi. He completely took advantage of her and definitely scarred her for life. I mean, yes, Hachi was not in the right for sleeping with a married man, but come on, come on, come on, she was a child. She was in high school. 
If anyone is to blame for this, it's that scumbag Asano. Also, when they ran in、um, to each other again in Tokyo, I feel like he wouldn't mind sleeping with her again if she had shown him some interest, which thankfully she didn't. I'm sure this man is still out there cheating on his wife somewhere. Like, that's all I want to say about him. I don't want to look at him anymore. I can't stand the sight of him, so we're putting him in jail. Okay, so next up we have my most favorite character ever, my man Yasu. What is left to say about this man? Like, I have such a huge crush on him, you guys, you wouldn't believe it. So, Yasu is the drummer and the leader of Blast. He used to be in a different band with Ren before the formation of Blast, and he was also Ren's childhood best friend. Yasu was in the same orphanage with Ren before getting adopted by the Takagi family, who seemed to be a very decent and loving family to him, so that's good for him. I love that for Yasu. I think it's interesting but not surprising that Yasu was the student council president when he was in school. Though I do wonder why he changed his whole getup after graduating, like shaving his head, having piercings, everything, despite wanting to become a lawyer, because according to my understanding of Japanese culture, appearance is very important. So, wouldn't his new look hinder his career opportunities as a lawyer? I don't know. I wonder if it was because he wanted to be in a band with Ren so that he could like, look after Ren, or simply just because he liked it. Yasu is definitely one of the more mature and stable characters of Nana. He's basically the big brother of everyone in the series. Like, he's always there for everybody. You can always count on him, which of course is great, and we all want to have someone like Yasu in our lives. But that also got me worried about him sometimes. Like, He's everybody's rock, so who's gonna be his rock? That's why I think it makes a lot of sense when he gets into a relationship with Mew. They're a great match because Mew herself is also very mature and a lot like Yasu. They're so cute, guys. I, I just love that pairing so much. I think Yasu definitely has a tendency to like save others when it comes to. Romantic relationships. I mean, he did it with Rera and then with Nana, and I wonder if it's kind of like the same thing with Mu. Like, is it the reason why he's attracted to Mu? He definitely has a healthy amount of self control, though, when it comes to this, because Yasu never took advantage of them or like crossed the line in any way. So, respect. Out of the members of Blast, Yasu is the one to care about Shin the most. I mean, Hachi does care about Shin, but she's technically not an official member of the band. The way Yasu treads the water so carefully when it comes to business, keeping in mind Nana and Shin's troubled upbringing, was so heartfelt to me. I appreciate that Yasu is a very realistic person, which is much needed for the band because he keeps everybody's toes on the ground. Nana, Nobu, and Shin, they don't really care much for the business aspect of being in a band and they just kind of want to focus on their art, which is understandable considering they're very young. And as an artistic person myself, I personally don't want to be bothered with the business side of things, but you kind of have to. Like, there's no avoiding it. We all live under capitalism, so they're very lucky to have someone like Yasu to deal with all of that. One more thing that I am so nosy, you guys. Like, I am so curious about Yasu and Shion's relationship and the dynamic between them. I wonder what happened in the past because I don't believe they've ever officially dated. Shion herself is a very interesting character to me, too, but we'll talk about her later. I mean, the tension between them, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop myself. <laughs> So, yeah, Yasu is definitely going into the besties tier for me. So, up next, we have Yuri Kosaka or Asami. I'm gonna call her Asami from now on because that's her real name. Asami is an adult film star under Gaia, the same company that manages Blast. She lives in the same dormitory as the rest of the Blast members and she immediately takes an interest in Nobu. Shortly after meeting each other, they became an item, and like I said, I do think they dated because Nobu wanted a rebound together with Hachi. No shade though, they were pretty cute together sometimes. I mean, it was very clear because Asami's look resembles Hachi, and her personality is a little bit fussy, like Hachi too. 
though without the hachi charm, you know? Personally, I don't like or dislike Asami. Her character is kind of mad to me. Sometimes she can get quite annoying. Like, she really got on my nerves when Hachi temporarily moved into the dorm to look after Nana after Ren's passing. Her jealousy is understandable, but girl, read the room. This is a very sensitive time and like, have some sympathy or something. Though I do think that her feelings for Nobu are genuine and I feel bad for her that she's still being taken advantage of by that sketchy manager of hers and just by Gaia in general. So at one point she wants to quit the adult film business but eventually she couldn't and even though she's now acting in real films, she's still expected to perform a lot of steamy scenes. So yeah, that clearly sucks for her. Overall, I don't really care for this character, even though that sounds harsh, but I just mean that I'm indifferent towards her. So she'll be going into the mat tier. Okay, who do we have next? Alright, let's talk about Mew. By the way, this is a trigger warning because we're going to touch on the topic of mental health and self-harm as we talk about Mew. So Mew, I like her a lot. I like her character design, there's a sense of melancholy about Mew, which is very fitting to her personality. I love the long hair, I love that she's kind of at odds with her sleazy management company. I love that she's with Yasu, and I love that she's become part of the gang. So Mew is a 27-year-old actress, also under Gaia. Mew lives in the same dorm as the other members of BLAST. She struggles with mental health problems and she self-harms by cutting her wrist sometimes. Despite being a working actress, Mew actually doesn't work a lot and her company keeps pushing her to do more like risque stuff, which is very annoying in my opinion. Mew as a character is very mature, which is why I think her and Yasu being together makes so much sense. It's very telling when she explains to Hachi how she feels about Yasu. So Mew said that she stops the self-harm because Yasu would be hurt to see her like that and she doesn't want to hurt him. And I think it's a very healthy mindset to have. In the future scenes, we see that they're still together, so clearly they're doing something right. I appreciate that Mew isn't like this perfect character, like a saint of a woman, because we do see her get jealous when Yasu is close to Nana or when she found out about Xion. But Yasu and Mew, they communicate and Yasu also made a point to put some distance between him and Nana. So yeah, basically I love them, a very healthy couple. They're like my favorite couple in the whole series. I wish we could have known more about her backstory because I do wonder why someone with a personality like Mew would become an actress and she's 27 so I kind of want to know what happens like in her 20s basically. I'm sure she has a lot of interesting story to tell. Um, so yeah, I also want to see her with Hachi more because I think Mew would be a healthy influence to our girl Hachi. Like big sister kind of vibe. So yeah, Mew is definitely going into the besties tier for me. I absolutely love this girl. So next up, we have this guy Kawano who scouted Blast for Gaia and wanted to push them to the big time. Nana referred to him as Tanuki because of the way he looks, which I don't know why, but that's just so funny to me and I ended up always referring to him in this way. So I like this guy. It's clear that he had a lot of confidence in Blast and he truly cares for the members as human beings and not just money-making machines. He showed understanding for Yasu's heavy responsibilities being Blast leader, which is refreshing because we really need to give Yasu his flowers, guys. He's without a doubt a great leader. That being said, I kind of don't really want to know more about him. I think his appearance in the story is quite enough. So, I'm gonna have to put him in the meh tier, even though that sounds really hostile, but it's not that I don't like him, it's just that he's he's very uninteresting to me. <laughs> so yeah, he's going to the meh tier. Alright, now we have a character who committed crimes against humanity, Ryoko. 
This woman is arguably the most hated character throughout the whole series, even though she is very much a side character. I mean, you could probably find some Takumi defenders out there, but I don't think anybody can make excuses for this woman. So Ryoko is a flight attendant living in the same apartment building as Shin's family. Um, we know that Shin had a horrible family life and was very much neglected. So Ryoko took advantage of that by taking him in and basically turned him into an S worker. An underaged one at that. And she introduced him to drugs and alcohol. It's also implied that Shin is not her only victim, and there are other young boys under her tutelage as well. Absolutely disgusting. So in the current story, Shin is、uh, 15, 16 years old. So we can work out that he started doing S work a lot earlier than that. All thanks to this Ryoko woman. That is abhorrent. It's even more disgusting when Ryoko commented on this, almost gloating, almost gloating that she turned an angel into a demon. Jail, right now, right away. Thankfully, justice is finally served for once. Now that she's in literal jail for possession of marijuana, but from my understanding, the police are aware of her S trafficking ring. So hopefully, she'll be in jail for a long, long time. So yeah, she's going in jail. Okay, so here comes a character that I personally adore, Xian. Let's talk about Xian. First of all, let me say this: I absolutely love Xian's character design. I mean, look at this woman; she is so mother. She's the mother of all mothers. I love her hairstyle, and I love that it changes from time to time. So she first appeared with a short bob, and then it changed into platinum blonde with bangs, and now it's black, and it's usually done up. Like her fashion style somehow reminds me of Dita Von Teese. So yeah, you you get the vibe. Like I'm so in love, you guys. I remember I literally squealed the first time she showed up in the story. As much as I love Yasu and Miu, I think Yasu and Shion would also make a beautiful couple. Shion is the president of Blast Private Fan Club, and she used to go out with Yasu, but I don't think they ever officially dated. So it's it's said in the story that Shion is Yasu's girl, but not his girlfriend. Wait, why does that sound kind of cool? No, 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 it's not. It's not cool. She's been a long time fan of Yasu ever since he was in his old band before forming Blast. So basically, a groupie. Like she's really devoted to Yasu, you guys. But her perspective on that relationship or on love in general is really noteworthy. So when asked about her relationship with Yasu, Shion said that she loved whatever Yasu loved, and she didn't feel the urge to possess him, which is very admirable. But I bet it must hurt a little too. Shion and Yasu still stay in touch after all these years, and I guess they're just maintaining a platonic friendship. But bro, the tension between them every time they're together, explosive. Sensational. It's also hinted that Shion has a sugar daddy, which I don't know why, but it's just so fitting, and we love that for her. We don't know much about Shion other than that, so I don't have anything else to say. But I would love to see more of her. Like I want to know her backstory. I want to know what happened between her and Yasu in the past. I also remember there's a scene where、um, the groupies they're like talking, and I just had a feeling that something was gonna come up. Like there's some drama among them, but alas, we never got to see if that was true. In conclusion, Shion is a queen. She slayed. She ate. She served, and she definitely belongs in the usurped tier. Okay, I've been avoiding talking about this character. I put him like nearly last because this man haunts my dreams. But we can't avoid him anymore, so let's talk about Takumi. Takumi is the bass player and the leader of the band Trap Nest. And listen, this man right here is public enemy number one. I would go as far as to say he's the most hated. 
character in the whole series. Whenever I feel down, I look up Takumi hate memes and that makes me feel better. Though much to my surprise, the first time I saw the show, I didn't hate him as much as I thought I would. I'm up to speed now, guys. No, but seriously, Takumi is one of the most complex characters in this series in my opinions. He's charismatic, business savvy, manipulative, abusive, egocentric, misogynistic. Yet he's also talented, seemingly a loving father, an efficient leader, does sometimes rise to the occasion, takes responsibility, etc. Also, it's very rare, but we do get to see Takumi's vulnerable side sometimes, so that makes it a little hard to flat out hate on him. And look, I will forever have beef with Ai Yazawa for making him look hot. I mean, look at this man. She knew what she was doing drawing him like that. Like, why you gotta be hot and an annoying asshole at the same time? When it comes to Takumi, there really is a lot to say because he is one of the main players in the story and we do get a Takumi POV chapter where we delve into his past and his upbringing which explains a lot as to how he became the person he is today even though that's not an excuse for his horrible behaviors and just being a stinky piece of shit but it does add more layers to his character and it makes him feel more human. Takumi as a leader is an efficient one. This man is ruthless and he wouldn't mind dirtying his hands or selling out his soul to get what he wants. Which I guess you could say is necessary in the cutthroat world of showbiz. However, I think Takumi cares more about Trapnest as a band and whatever he does is for the sake of Trapnest itself and not exactly for the members. I'm not saying he doesn't care about his bandmates at all, but at the end of the day, I feel like Takumi would always put what's best for business first. Unfortunately, from my experience, I see the Takumi types often end up with a Hachi of their own. There is some debate among the fans of the series as to whether Takumi really loves Hachi, and I'm here to tell you that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really am confused because that's not something that I myself would call love. Like that's clearly abuse to me. But I think that he thinks that he loves her. Like as far as loving someone else goes, that's the best that he can do. So yeah, it's kind of twisted. I think he loves her because she's someone that he can control. Like he knows no matter what he does, Hachi wouldn't leave him. And he knows that Hachi is a kind and forgiving person and she has a soft spot for him. So he's more than willing to take advantage of that. Like you can see this person is obsessed with being in control. Though he does spoil Hachi since he's rich AF and he seems to be a good father to their two children. So at least he's not a deadbeat dad, I'll give him that. Also, there's one thing that confuses me about Takumi is when he cheated on Hachi with Rera. So Takumi consistently denies his feelings for Rera, claiming that he only thinks of her as a sister. So why suddenly sleep with her? You might say that, oh, you know, maybe he did it because Rera was becoming frantic after her fallout with Shin and Takumi was just trying to keep her from losing her shit, but really? Really? You can only calm a girl down by sleeping with her. I mean, I just can't with this man. I can't. And if that is the whole story, Takumi would just be another annoying cheater. But no, 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 no. We're not done. So this man, right? Who is a known womanizer. A master manipulator. And guess what? A graphist. Yeah, a literal criminal. I was so shocked the first time I saw it, I had to hit pause and stare at my imaginary audience for 5 minutes. So this guy, he did not use protection when he was sleeping with Hachi, like he was just counting on divine intervention I guess. He knocked her up, he then exposed that information without her consent, and then proceeded to c**p her. Twice. He went on to cheat on Hachi multiple times during their marriage with several women. Rera at one point also insinuated that he assaulted her. 
So like, please, can we band together and defeat the evil? Sorry, guys, I got so heated. I need to take a sip of water to chill out. Anyway, I can't put Takumi anywhere but jail. Like, honestly, that's that's what he deserves. I understand that he's a very complex character, but at the end of the day, I just can't get over some of the horrible things that he did. So yeah, it's jail for him. Okay, now we have one of the most disgusting people of this series, in my opinions, Kudo. So you probably don't remember him, or maybe you do, but he's just kind of hard to miss. Because he is kind of the mastermind behind a lot of the disasters in the story, Kudo is the editor-in-chief at Search Magazine. Okay, I don't really know if he was the chief, but he was bossing everyone around, so I assume that he was the chief. So he, this one, is the mastermind behind Nana and Ren's expose, which pushed Gaia to debut Blast. Though it was insinuated that Gaia was also behind this expose, or at least they knew about it and they approved it. This Kudo guy is absolutely ruthless. He didn't give a shit about Blast or Trap Nest or whoever. Like he would dig anyone over if it means he can get his way. He's the type of journalist that would do anything for a story. Like it's actually an insult to journalists in general to call him a journalist. No, actually, do you know who he reminds me of? This guy, Lou Bloom from Nightcrawler. Yeah, he's that creepy. The fact that he wanted Kurada to photograph the scene of Ren's accident is just absolutely despicable. Sadly, that is not unrealistic because we know that there are a lot of people like him in real life. I don't have a lot to say about this man, nor do I want to. For one, we don't know much about him apart from him being a merciless, annoying prick. What's more, I just really cannot stand the sight of him. Every time he comes on screen, I feel nauseous. Oh, but there's something that I just want to quickly mention. So there's one scene um, in the anime where Kudo said he wanted to punch Takumi and his annoyingly perfect nose. <laughs> I don't know why, but it was so funny to me. It just really, really stuck with me. So when I saw the actor who played Takumi in the live action, I was like, he does have a perfect nose. He was born to play Takumi. <laughs> Okay, enough of me and my shenanigans. Yeah, so Kudo, we hate him. He belongs in the EU tier as well. So next, we have Mari. Mari is a part of Trapnet's management team. Her main responsibility, though, is to look after Rera. I don't have a lot to say about her because she is very much a side-side character. Her actions didn't impact the storyline, and we also know very little about Mari. We do know that she went to law school, but for some reason, she became Reira's babysitter instead. Mari is a smart girl, and I think, I think she established pretty healthy boundaries with the male members of Trap Nest who jokingly propositioned her from time to time. I mean, like, I know it's a joke, but still, like, she doesn't seem to get starstruck, and she's pretty diligent at her job. Like, someone like Hachi would never be able to survive this kind of work. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that is all that I have to say about Mari, and I will be putting her in the meh tier, even though that sounds hostile for some reason, because I do kind of like her, but I can't really put her anywhere else. I just think that, you know, her place is in the meh tier. Guys, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot about Sachiko. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I'm not saying she's a forgettable character, because she played quite the part. At the beginning of the series but anyway i just sort of forgot to add her onto the list but now we're going to talk about her all right here we go sajiko is a classmate and also a co-worker of shoji's she had a crush on shoji not knowing that he had a girlfriend so up to this point it's all right because she didn't know right so we're gonna give her a pass for that but even after knowing that Shoji indeed had a girlfriend, she still refused to leave him the hell alone. I mean, there's no going back from that. I mean, yes, Shoji was coming onto her as well, and he's definitely more in the wrong in this situation. 
It's not entirely Sachiko's fault, but girl, you know the man is already taken and you still think it's okay to mess with him? And then she even had the gall to be all crying and apologetic and shit when she met Hachi at that restaurant and realized that this is an actual human being and a nice one at that that you're screwing with. But props to Ayazawa because boy that scene was just all too real. But me saying that doesn't mean that Sachiko's clear of all of her wrongdoings. All in all, like I said, I still think Shoji is definitely more at fault in this situation. If anything, Sachiko was at least more brave than that rat Shoji ever was because she did ask to put a stop to the cheating and she even protected him in front of Nana. I mean, if it hadn't been for her, Shoji would have definitely had his ass kicked. And I'd love to see that. But anyway, even though I don't hate her as much as a lot of the fans of the series do, I can't say that I like her either. She's just kind of meh to me. I don't really care about this girl. So I'm going to be putting her in the meh tier. Okay guys, there you have it. A pretty much complete Nana's character tier list that absolutely nobody asked for, but this is my form of therapy, so here we are. Nana as a series will always have a special place in my heart, and I'm sure I will rewatch and reread it from time to time. I'm still so lost in that world, you guys, and I have formed some sort of unhealthy attachment to the characters. Like, I feel like I know them, I live with them, I'm their friends. Like, I'm so unhealthy, I need help. Anyway, I still have a lot more to say about Nana, so I will probably make more in-depth analysis in the future, you know, if my ADHD and depression allow it. Okay, thank you for sticking around. This is such a long video, so here's a round of applause for you for making all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Have a nice day, drink your water, get some sunlight, get some steps in, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!